Hey guys, what's up? Murder of Birds here. So it seems like the Ruby Hype Train has no breaks at this point. We are getting more promotion and more exposure leading up to Ruby Volume 4 uh, with the official reveal of the trailer that we'll be releasing next week, Ruby Volume 4 later this year, and a bunch of other things in between when it comes to Ruby that we can look forward to. Rooster Teeth has been cranking out more and more content when it comes to hyping us up and again doing more promotions for Volume 4, especially this week with the reveal of Team Ruby in their new time skip altered costumes and attire and it looks so fucking awesome and it basically inspired me to do this video because up until this point the concept has been out there uh, since RTX 2016 and I didn't really want to do anything until evidence was concrete that the concept art was actually going to be what was in the final product. Um, for the most part, I do know concept art is always just its concept. It's an idea that hasn't been fully flushed in concrete and put on paper. And now since Rooster Teeth has uploaded those official designs to social media, I felt like this was a perfect time to do that. Yang's fucking official design for Volume 4 looks so dope, and that was almost like the catalyst for this entire video. So leave me your thoughts of how you guys feel about all of this promotion and hype leading up to Ruby Volume 4. I'm super, super excited. I'm going to be going over my thoughts and opinions of these official concept designs and stuff like that, weighing in my opinions and things we can look forward Forward to. I hope you guys enjoy and without further ado, let's jump right into it. So starting off with Ruby, uh, her design, let's see, I look at her design and I feel a strong sense of maturity. Um, this is about a six to eight month time skip between volumes three and four. She is the youngest of the herd when it comes to her friends and teammates being 15 at the start of uh, Ruby and it being six to eight months later at the end of the school year prior to volumes three. She's about 16, the rest of her friends are about 18. But when you look at Ruby, when you look at this design, uh, it screams to me, hey, I'm growing up, I'm maturing, puberty's doing the right thing in all the right places. Um, she's showing off a lot more skin, she's got a lot more wear and tear on her you know, on her stockings, on her cape, that could be due to having skirmishes out in the real world, in the wild, uh, with Grimm fighting alongside Team Juniper, or that could be a sense of just natural travel. She's traveling from Patch, an island off the coast of Vale, where she's from, all the way to Haven, based on the intel, um, you know, that was given to them in the, you know, the leads that they had from Crow, that the enemy's trail leads all the way to Haven. So, it seems like she's been going through a lot. I will say though that based on her wear and tear finesse right here, this kind of resembles a lot of Crow, uh, because Crow's uh, cape also has a lot of wear and tear, and I do feel like because Ruby always holds on to her cape no matter what, whether she's in her normal attire, her volume 2 attire, her school uniform, she always has her cape, and I would like to think that it is a memento of her mother's or maybe something of a memorabilia of, you know, wanting to be just like her uncle since she takes after his, you know, sporadic and reckless nature. As such, like I mentioned, she seems to be developing and maturing more, puberty, like I mentioned, is kicking in, she's showing off a lot more skin. Uh, giving herself a bit more sex appeal for her character. Like I said, she is maturing and growing up a lot more So maybe that's in you know, that's something that we can look into Maybe she's not just into Crescent Rose Maybe she'll develop a relationship with people that she meets along the way or maybe with Jean or anything like that I don't really know how that goes, but it's definitely there. The appeal is there It's definitely apparent that you know, she's growing more into herself as a lady not just as someone that's crazy about fighting and I really hope that that's conveyed and, you know, developed as the series goes on. As for her outfit design, I feel like it's a combination of her Volume 1 and Volume 2 outfit. Um, I don't know why, but, like, if you were to combine the two, I think you would, you would get something like this or something close to this. I really like it. It, it, you know, it works well for her in terms of a time skip, in terms of changing things up, in terms of seeing how she's matured and grown, and how this, uh, you know, outfit speaks to her in terms of her growth and development as a character. And I might be reading too much into this, but based on the, you know, the designs of Volume 1 and Volume 2 Ruby, this volume, like I mentioned, she's all tattered and torn up and stuff like that. She's probably been through a lot on the road, uh, learning more about herself, learning more about the world of Remnant, being away from her friends and family and the protection of people who care about her, being with a different team and being having like a different type of synergy, growing more with them. I really like to believe, maybe I'm reading too much into it, but when I like put volume 1 outfit and volume 2 outfit together with this volume outfit, when you look at like the progression of that to seeing her outfit now I would like to think that that has like a form of symbolism to like the damaging of her innocence Ruby is no longer a child she's being thrown into the real world she's being thrown into the world of remnant to fend for herself to find answers to grow as a person to grow as a huntsman to grow as a team leader and I think that would be kind of like a cool idea like the more she gets into the trenches of understanding the world and understanding what it means to be in this line of work the more damaging and battle-torn she'll 
be and the more she'll learn and become more wiser and be you know more smarter about her decisions in the future now this may be wishful thinking for me personally and i know there are other people in the community who have echoed the same type of opinion um and for those of you who have also seen like my reactions and stuff penny and pira were some impactful characters for me characters that i cared very deeply for and given the event of ruby volume 3 um i resonated extremely with um and a lot of people myself included i'd really hope and like to believe that ruby has also matured to a point where she realizes that it it's a part for her to live on and to carry on for those who can't and a lot of people myself included have noticed a similarity in terms of certain aspects of pira and penny's you know costume or outfit design to ruby's like ruby's corset kind of reminds me of penny's um the the little pendant that ruby uses on her you know upper part of her uh hood is now similar to like the one that pira uses for her skirt so i think those would be kind of awesome nods to always have us remember these characters and remember that these characters are kind of forcing ruby to grow for the better and to be a stronger fighter and to be more dependable and to understand this life that she's been destined to you know live as a, as a huntsman as a huntress uh, as you know a silver eyed warrior or whatever so but overall i just love ruby's design i love how it's shaping her as a character and i really like to see you know her make the most of it as the series continues moving on from ruby we have the ice queen herself and what's even cooler is that she doesn't have one but two outfits but in all honesty before i even get into my thoughts of her outfit Take a good hard look at Weiss right now from this concept and tell me one significant thing that is severely different about her. Did you figure it out? Her hair. For as long as Weiss has been introduced in Ruby, Volumes 1, Volume 2, Volume 3, she has gone from Ice Queen to Snow Angel to what she is now of being an awesome character with a lot of depth and complexity and she's always made it a point she's always made it a fact to prove to other people and to let it be known of her rebellion she's in a bad relationship with her dad she's moved from atlas to go and study at a different school to change her future to change her fate and the very clear indication of this rebellion that is noticed from the moment you see her is the ponytail that she has that is slightly off to the side almost like uh i'm gonna do what i want i'm gonna be a rebel i'm gonna be different i'm gonna change things <sighs> when you see this concept it seems to me like she's been reined in that she has experienced what it's like to be a bird out of its cage to do her own thing, to try to carve her own path, to change her destiny, to not be seen as this person that's just, you know, living the hoity-toity high society lifestyle. She seems to be someone who's had a taste of freedom and has been pulled back into her cage. And um, that's clearly evident in the fact that she's very graceful now. She has a very clear ponytail in the center of her head and that says a lot I, at least i like to think that it means a lot there's a lot of symbolism to that of how she was of how she wanted to change things of how she wanted to be different she branched out she wasn't as much of a bitch after volume one she got really close with people and then her father just came and took that all away from her and i think that's very evident in the fact that she has two outfits because she has one outfit that's very formal and dress like and something that you know papa schnee would want her to wear to like a gathering or something to make his his name look good to make his family look good and something that she honestly probably wouldn't want she wants to be rocking those fucking awesome combat skirts she wants to be fighting she wants to be a huntress she wants to prove herself she wants to make a name for herself and change things and i think that's where her glimmery kind of combat skirt it's a, like a more refined more free version of the one that she had in volumes one and two and it expresses her individuality it expresses how she wants to be seen how she wants to do things differently and i love the fact that winter is someone who supports her and i really hope winter comes through to try to help get her out of that situation if she is trapped if she's being controlled by her dad if she's doing what she's told instead of you know speaking up and having a voice for herself and for those of you who don't know out of everyone in team ruby i am very much attached to weiss uh, mainly for a lot of the osts that convey her childhood and her past and 
she resonates the most with me in terms of uh, you know internal struggles of trying to find a way for yourself and trying to be something that you want to be and not following the crowd and not trying to please other people and i really hope she makes it out of this moving on from her we have blake and i was gonna try to keep this serious and focused but i cannot remain silent you guys absolutely have to know this i trust you guys i want you guys to always be in the moment and i absolutely need to know did Rooster Teeth just cut my boy Seto Kaiba's wardrobe? I've been talking about winning my Egyptian God card this entire duel. Now it's time for you to experience its power. <laughs> no, but in all seriousness, this outfit's badass. This outfit's like rogue ninja. I'm going AWOL status. It it, it kind of makes me feel like Blake is like vigilante in a way, like she's kind of going against the grain, she's leaving her friends behind, she's doing whatever it takes to right her wrongs and to keep her friends out of danger. And I kind of like that about the motives that she has with wanting to distance herself from Yang to keep her safe, knowing that Adam is going to be on her ass and wanting to be, you know, as far away from people as possible, be out of the loop with situations and things, and maybe even go on her own path for redemption to kind of face Adam or face the White Fang or try to change things for the better um, for whatever she ends up going through. And much like Ruby's outfit, I also like to think that Blake's Volume 4 outfit is a combination of her Volume 1 and Volume 2 outfits. It's just a perfect combination that works really well. She's got like the long like twin-tailed uh, coat and you know that's kind of like its own thing. It's pretty cool. I don't know how that's going to be utilized. I don't know where she got it from if she went back to the White Fang, if she picked it up off of somebody or whatever. And in the addition with those thigh-high fucking snake boots, like, come on, let's be serious. <sighs> and now for that, we talk about someone who's had it rough. We talk about my girl, Yang Xiaolong. <sighs> this is going to be tough. Now, this outfit of Yang's is something very different that we've never seen before. We've never seen casual wear, if you will. Um... She seems very different. The title of this outfit actually is Yang Xiaolong DGAF. Time skip version. You know what DGAF stands for? Don't give a shit. At least that's what I think this is. Um, she's fallen from grace. Um, <sighs> she's different. She's defeated. She's... In turmoil she's grieving she lost a teammate she lost a friend who's you know who's back in her kingdom her sister's nowhere to be seen she's physically mentally and emotionally damaged and I don't think she's gonna bounce back from it guys I think Yang has given up and I know it's hard to hear and I know that you know it's like well, she's Yang. She always bounces back from things. I really don't think that's going to be the case. I think the Yang we know is long gone. And to be completely honest, I know I'm going to get a lot of flack for saying that, but I really do think it's best if... It's best if we forgot about her. <sighs> Are you serious? Fuck out of here with that. Are you kidding me right now? Look at Yang fucking Xiaolong. The fucking firecracker. The Super Saiyan. Goldilocks. Fucking fierce as fuck. I woke up to this. I actually woke up to this on social media and I lost my goddamn mind. Literally losing my mind like... Like, she bounces back. We get Yang Xiaolong back, okay? Yang was defeated. Yang was in agony. Yang was in distraught turmoil. Like, she was down for the count. Emotionally, physically, mentally destroyed. Lost her teammate. Lost her fucking other teammate who went back home. Lost her sister who went on a journey with other people to find answers. She didn't want anything. Don't give a shit. That was her outfit for her pre-time, that for her post-time skip. She's home. She, she, she has no strength. She has nothing to keep her going. And she fucking bounces back. I'm telling you, character semblances are a direct link to their personality. Yang's semblance is all about pain is power. 
as long as she can take those hits and bounce back, that pain turns into power. And it's just like this. She got her ass kicked from Neo. She got decimated by fucking Adam. She was emotionally destroyed by Blake running off. And guess what? This is the result of it. I don't know if we're going to see this in Volume 4, if it's going to be portrayed at the end, but she looks she looks fucking incredible. She looks so fucking fierce. She like you know what she really reminds me of? She's like on some Naruto shit like fucking Sasuke like yo I'm an Avenger. I'm about to fucking take names and fucking kick ass and take names and do anything that it takes to find answers. And you know what? She also has like the the design looks fucking awesome too. She's got like the like the swishy kind of she she almost has like cowboy pants on. I don't know what those are called. She's got her same boots. You can kind of see the like the the purple ribbon tied on her leg. Um, she's got a bronze stud now where her arm is, or where her arm was, <laughs> where her arm was, and that's awesome. That shows growth. That shows that she's not going to take the easy way out and get a fucking robot arm and go into things just as stupid as she did the first time. She's going to think. She's going to plan. She's going to grow. She's going to mature, and oh my god, and like my mo- <laughs> The most exciting thing about this is the fact that I can't wait to see how Barbara's performance is with this. I don't know if this is going to be something that's going to be hard for her to overcome, but this is going to be a great way to not see Yang in a kind of upbeat, happy-go-lucky, carefree, rolls with the punches, goes with the flow kind of style. She's going to be a lot more serious. She's going to learn from her mistakes. She's going to come back 10 times better than she was before. And I'm very, very excited about that. And from this design, ultimately, I think that it does show Yang in a sort of roguelike state. Like I mentioned, her sister's out finding her own answers. Weiss is trying to is probably trying to get out of the bird cage that she's in at home. Blake is trying to redeem herself and you know the things that she feels responsible for. And I really feel like this is Yang's chance to kind of take that next step of finding answers for herself, finding Raven, finding her mother. And Crow also did mention that information slipped when he met his sister last, and I hope he relayed that to Yang, uh, because I feel like that's going to be a great way for her to go on her own journey, on her own chapter of growing herself. And that's a part of personal growth too. It's always great to be around friends and family, but it's also a great learning and life experience to grow as an individual to be by yourself, to experience things for yourself. It gives you a better sense of appreciation for your friends and family when you're alone and you're, you have no one else to turn to, you have no one else to rely on. So I really hope that that's something that Yang's able to take away from the experience, to go into this new form of life with a, a cool head on her shoulders, a new form of resolve, and to be able to you know learn from her past mistakes maybe not go into anything like a firecracker and just shoot first ask questions later and i'm really excited to see how rooster teeth is going to be able to give all of these characters their own form of screen time who are you going to focus on in a 12 episode volume uh, on top of more world building on top of new characters on top of plot progression on top of fight scenes which to be completely honest i'm expecting a lot and hoping for a lot more story than fighting i think volume three kind of did it for us when it came to the overwhelming amount of fighting because of the whole vital festival tournament thing uh, i wouldn't mind seeing new grim hair there seeing some skirmishes whatnot but in terms of full-fledged fights uh, i would just love to get more story more knowledge on the maidens more knowledge on uh, silver eyed warriors and stuff like that more forwarding of cinder's plans if we're going to get introduced to salem what's ozpin up to all that other stuff but ultimately those are just my general thoughts of these uh, new concept designs uh, regarding the four girls of Team Ruby and by proxy how this will affect them in the overall grand scheme of uh, Ruby Volume 4. I hope you guys enjoyed this long-winded video. I'm pretty sure it's going to be the longest one that I've done in a while. But I hope you guys enjoyed it. Leave me your thoughts especially. I want to know you guys' thoughts on, on what you guys feel about Ruby Volume 4. How do you guys feel about these costumes as opposed to these characters' new forms of personality over the long time skip and what we can expect for Volume 4. What are you guys expecting for Volume 4? Uh, leave me your thoughts on the video itself, the overall quality. Uh, I'm always trying to improve and I really appreciate your feedback. Thank you guys again for your undying continued support. Uh, I will be talking to you guys very soon uh, in a couple of days when the Volume 4 trailer drops for my analysis, reaction, and live discussion. And uh, until next time, I will see you guys in the next video. Take care.